Warblers. Hey, how you doing? Bob Folks here for the Gilly Glue. Just going on about some warblers. It's that time of year. Uh, we're getting into the 1st of August. And uh, even though summer, you know, we've had really hot and humid weather here for the last little while in Eastern Ontario, but uh, we're getting into fall migration. Some people uh, kind of don't like to hear that word because it implies some other things, but definitely we're starting to transition or stage our way into uh, fall mi migration. A lot of the early birds to leave are, you know, of course, the, the late arrivals. Some of the late arrivals, uh, Great Custard Flycatcher, Baltimore Orioles, Scar Scarlet Tanager, you know, all of those kind of guys are going to get ready, are starting to get ready because they're first to depart. But today we wanted to talk about warblers. It's, uh, you know, I've talked about them many, many times before. It's it's something that uh, I really, really love, uh, warblers. It's, uh, they're a great species. They're very interesting. They have some cool characteristics. They have similar songs, but different. They, um, uh, what they look, the males particularly, what they look like in the spring and what they look like in the fall are two different, uh, two different things. There's around 115 different species of warblers. Uh, we get around 40 of them here in eastern Ontario uh, and eastern Canada, which is primarily uh, a lot of their nesting sites. So eastern, eastern North America actually is uh, primarily their, their nesting area that they migrate up into. And a lot of times the other different thing that is very kind of cool about them is that in the spring, a lot of them will transition over the Gulf Coast and follow the trade winds coming north uh, and actually fly over water, all over that water, and they, they migrate at night uh, in flocks and in groups and, and what have you, and uh, even with some other species sometimes it's been reported. Um, but then when they leave in the fall uh, to go south, they tend to stay along the coastline and in through. Sometimes I've uh, read some different things over the years where in uh, in the fall there's actually a higher percentage of birds say along louisiana and texas and into florida and those areas in the fall than there is in the spring because they take a different route which is kind of a cool thing in itself so we have like the bay breasted the black warbler, black throated blue warbler black throated gray warbler black throated green warbler black burnian warbler black pole warbler blue winged warbler canadian warbler cape may warbler cerulean warbler we got warblers all over the place this uh <laughs> the Blackburnian warbler. I mean, look at that guy. How cool is that? He's beautiful. Now, let's see what they rate him. You know, juvenile. Really, really cool guys. They, uh, you know, the black and whites are quite a common uh, warbler to Ontario. See them quite a bit. They look similar, the male and the female. Uh, their songs are quite similar in terms of how what they sound like and things and it's it's just a kind of a cool 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 bird that we wanted to start to talk about the uh migration as i say is getting ready so they're going to trans start to transition but some of these birds uh will actually stay very late into the fall uh, some of them are very early to arrive in the in the spring and some of them are very late to stay into the spring or excuse me into the fall so uh, some of them like in uh, very eastern Canada for instance sometimes they say they, they see warblers into uh, um, late into December and sometimes even January now the, their survival rate may be questioned a little bit when they stay uh, in places like St. John's Newfoundland or any of those kind of places that late that's going to uh, definitely create some problems for them um, but the, the, one of the things that I really, really like it is about the ch change of... So there's a bay-breasted male warbler in his spring plumage or breeding plumage, as we call it. Then the same bird, uh, in non-breeding colors, it looks like this. Now, I, I... Look at this. You wouldn't even know it was the same bird. And that's the, the allure of, of that, to be able to go out and, and sight them. So if one, you get to sight them in the spring, and then two, you get to sight them in the fall, and you have to learn a whole new set of skills to be able to ID them in the, in the fall. So it's, it's really, really cool to, to be able to do that. Um, and, and they often say, instead of male identification and whatever, it's, it's a, adult breeding and, and non uh, breeding because in some of the species they they all kind of look the same so it's it's a very uh, cool the can Canadian warblers also he's very uh, 
very Canadian uh, type thing. In fact, on the, the Sibley's uh, newest second edition of their field guide, they have that bird on the front. This is an excellent book, by the way. Um, it's a great, great, great book, uh, that, and it has this uh, Canadian warbler on the front, or Cerulean, I maybe that one is. Uh, and then we have uh, individual books that are specialized just talking about uh, warblers themselves. This, uh, this is a Peterson's Field Guide, and the reason I like this is it's very in-depth. Often we don't get a lot of study on individual species like that, where we get a field guide that has uh, all of the sort of Eastern North American or North American birds clumped into uh, to the same thing. So it's, it's a very cool, cool, cool kind of thing. This guy is obviously a very beautiful, beautiful bird. That's the cerulean. Uh, some of them are endangered. They're losing their habitat. Uh, climate change is changing things. They, they're an insect eater uh, primarily. And of course, we don't have insects like we used to have at all. Uh, I was coming home last night, actually, a little bit later. Um, it was around 10 o'clock when I was on my, making my way home. And I just sort of noticed again, I mean, I've noticed this many, many times, but I noticed again that the amount of insects that was hitting the car were uh, way down compared to what they used to be. If you think about it, you know, anybody that's kind of in around my age back in the, say, in the 70s, for instance, out and about running the roads in the late 60s, early 70s, I mean, you'd have to, every other day, you'd have to stop to get the bug off your windshield. Well, we don't see that at all anymore. Uh, so that's affecting the numbers of the birds. But it's a great time to get out, uh, start with habitat, of course. And one of the things I wanted to talk about with the, uh, to be able to ID warblers, let alone their color, uh, is the, the center of gravity is what, one of the things that I like to talk about. So if you look at the legs, you can sort of see that the legs are kind of straight in the center of gravity of that bird so that they're right over their legs where if you take a woodpecker as an example they, his legs are way down its body uh, to be able to do what they do on a on a tree so it's a great time to get out and uh, see what you can find for warblers uh, you know get a, find the habitat so there they like love to be up in the hall up uh, up in the trees they like to uh, to be uh, in areas where um, they uh, can jump around. They're very sporadic. They're very. They move a lot. They're all over the place. They're very high, hard to get a hold of, um, to, because to sight them. So you need your binoculars. And if you remember, you know we always take our binoculars and preset them to the height that we're going to work in, uh, in the bush, so that you don't have to be monkeying around. All you have to do is is kind of fine tune your focus when you're getting there, and you should be able to to be able to see. Most of them aren't very big. They're just smaller birds. Um, and very different markings in the fall than in the in the summer. So get out there, get out in some sort of dense habitat, some higher trees where you can kind of look around, listen for them. They don't sing too much this time of year because it's mo primarily in the spring. It's the male that does all the singing uh, to identify t and state his territory, but also to attract the female. Uh, but it's a fantastic time to start to see the transitioning staging of a lot of different birds, uh, but certainly to start to find out about the more about the warblers, uh, their districts, their ranges, their all those kind of things. It's fun stuff to do. Incorporate your kids, um, grandkids, all those things. Stop by the store, say good day whenever you're about, and have some fun with the birds. Take care. Have a great day.